Hi there, I'm Andrea Koppel, and it's time for Coffee, the podcast where you get to hear firsthand what the jobs and careers that interest you the most are really like. Hey there, Java junkies. My next guest is living out the childhood dream of so many young children to be working in major league sports. But before we get into her story, if you haven't already signed up for the Java Junkies Journal, our weekly newsletter giving you a sneak peek at the professionals we'll be speaking with that week, please do so. You can head over to the Time for Coffee website. That's time, the number number four, coffee.org and sign up. And while you're there, you may want to check out the homepage of T4C, which organizes all the T4C episodes by career. So you can just click on the category of the profession you're most interested in and find the relevant episodes to you. Now, grab your mug and hopefully it's got some delicious pumpkin spice or something seasonally appropriate in it and take a chug because it's time for another caffeinated career conversation. And my My guest today, Eve Rosenbaum, is someone I've been trying to interview for months, ever since her (laughs) dear friend, Noelle Bloomfield, introduced us. But because of Eve's job, she is constantly on the road and usually in another country. Eve is the manager of international scouting for the 2017 World Series champions, the Houston Astros. Woo! She's been with the Astros since January of 2014. 15, so she's coming up on four years. And before that, she worked in the National Football League in its business intelligence and optimization unit. I can't wait to talk with her about all of this. Eve, welcome to Time for Coffee. Are you caffeinated and ready to go? Hi there. Thanks for having me. You know what? I just realized I actually have not had my coffee yet this morning because I ran out of filters. So uh oh. Some, some new ones. Uh oh. Oh my gosh. Well, you're traveling so much. So I'm sure it's like really hard to stay on top of what you have in your kitchen. That is 100% true. Fortunately, though, I do get to travel places with great coffee. So I have some fresh bags of Colombian coffee sitting uh, out on my kitchen cabinet right now. Oh, that is awesome. Lucky you. So Eve, these are the espresso shots. We're going to kind of start throwing them back right now. The first question, what entry-level jobs are available to young people who want to break into the field of major league sports? Yeah, so for sports in general and definitely for baseball, you want to start off with an internship. There are summer internships at all of the major leagues and at each of the clubs, at each of the teams. And then there's also year-round internships that are usually for people after they've graduated college. And a lot of teams will hire an intern for a year. And if they do well, hire them on for a full-time position. So those can all be found online. There's Teamwork Online is a big sports website. And then all of the clubs and the leagues post on their own websites as well. Great. That is really good to know. What, in your opinion, Eve, is a useful skill or skills that you look for in the people that you hire? So the number one skill that I look for is just the ability to figure things out and get things done. So that's hard to define. It's kind of amorphous. Um, It's also hard to find. But that's what I've always had to do in my career. And that's what I look for when I interview people. It's hard to find on a resume, but I do do a lot of interviewing. And I think once you get into a conversation with someone, it's easier to figure out. So really what it means is just like right now, I have someone working in an assistant position for me and I trust him to get anything done. If I've got too much on my plate and I just walk over him and say, hey, I need you to do this task. I'm not going to give you that much guidance. I know that he'll be able to get it done by the end of the day. That that's what I look for, the ability of someone to just dig into something, figure things out, ask questions when they need guidance, but have the confidence in themselves to learn new skills and accomplish any task. Yeah. And thank goodness for Google. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Yes. And YouTube videos and all that good stuff. Yep. Now, what about someone's major? Is that a deciding factor? Is that an important factor that you think you're supervisors or for that matter, you look for in the people that you hire to come into your industry? So I studied psychology in college. And a lot of people ask me all the time, they go, how did you study psychology and then get into baseball? And it makes no sense to these people. So I 
have to say no to this question because I, I studied psychology and I work with a lot of people who studied psychology. I work with people who studied history, government, people who studied more of the liberal arts background. But then I also work with a lot of people who studied economics and business and physics and math and statistics and computer science. So there are definitely some majors that you learn more practical skills, but really I think you can study anything in college. And if you have enough other things going for you, which we can get into later, you can get into the sports field with no problem. Great. What about a graduate school degree? And I know you don't have one at this point. In order to succeed in your field, and I guess it depends on your definition of what success looks like, but if you really want to get high up in the ranks of, you know, whether it's Major League Baseball or NFL or whatever it is, how important do you think it is to have a grad degree? So this is something I think about a lot, and I have sort of a mixed opinion about it because I at first wanted to go back and get a business school degree. I took the GMAT, I applied to some business school programs, and then I actually decided that there was so much for me to learn within my field, within baseball, that it wasn't going to benefit me to go back and get an MBA. It was going to benefit me to just throw myself even more into my work. Now, at the same time, There are lots of executives who have MBAs. There are lots of executives who have JDs. I also work with a lot of people who have graduate degrees in math and physics and neuroscience. So for this, I really think it depends on the specific person who's considering going back to school and their specific role. And I would recommend doing a lot of thinking about what you would gain going back to get a graduate degree and how far that degree would get you when you came back into the industry, as opposed to just throwing yourself into the industry, maybe taking some online classes, finding some good mentors and just figure out which one's going to get you further. Yeah, that's great advice, Eve. What about life experiences? What, in your opinion, and I know that you played a lot of sports as an undergrad, and I'm sure when you were a young person before you even went into college, what kind of experiences do you think are most useful for people who are interested in breaking into the field of major league sports? I think that playing collegiate athletics or even playing high school athletics is absolutely irreplaceable experience. And I think it helps people in any job, not just sports. The reason I think that is for a few reasons. One thing you learn as an athlete is you learn how to fail. A lot of people face a lot of failure in their personal lives and in their professional lives. And if you played sports at a high level, you know what it's like to fail, but have to get back up and go out and face the next pitch or get back onto the court the next day. So in baseball, we say all the time, if you fail two thirds of the time, you're doing really, really well in baseball. So having that experience is definitely useful. And then the other thing you gain from being part of a sports team is that you're part of a team. You're all achieving the same goal. And a lot of companies, again, I work for a baseball team, we're trying to win the World Series. We're all trying to achieve the same goal. And so if you have athletics in your background, you know what that's like to have to work with people every single day who you might differ with but you're on a team and you're trying to achieve the same goal. I love it. What is the best part for you, Eve, of being in this profession, working for the Houston Astros? So for me, I get to work on something every single day that I love, which is that I love baseball. I grew up playing baseball. My parents tell me that I knew how to throw before I knew how to walk. And now the fact that I get to do it for my career just seems almost like it's too good to be true some days. I can totally see that. I think there are a lot of people who would want to switch places with you. (laughs) What about the flip side? What is it about your current job and now you are a manager that sucks the most? So in this job in baseball and sports, and honestly, I think in a lot of professions these days, you're constantly working. The idea of a nine to five job really doesn't exist anymore, probably for the subset of listeners who are listening to this. I have two phones. My phone starts going off at seven in the morning and it keeps going until 10 p.m. at night. And if I'm lucky, I get a Sunday without work, but there's most Saturdays, there's something to be working on. Now that 
is, I think, something that people have to be prepared for in sports. You have to be prepared to be working all the time. But then at the same time, something I'm always working on is trying to find a balance to give myself to be able to sit down and recharge and get refreshed mentally. But definitely you need to be prepared to work all the time and to give up a lot of the traditional holidays like July 4th. You've got a game on July 4th, you're going to be working. Mm, Yeah. And certainly over Thanksgiving, I mean, when you were in the NFL, for sure, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's games on. There's people watching. You got to be working. What is the best career advice you've ever gotten, Eve? The best answer I ever heard to this question was I was at a career panel when I lived in New York City and someone was asked this question and his response, I'm going to steal it. His response was, I was always told to dress for the job you want, not to dress for the job you have. And that's why I dress like a retired librarian. I just thought that was so funny and just brought some lightness to the situation that when it can get stressful when people are looking for jobs. But really when it comes to advice, I like to ask people for advice and people ask me for advice. And I really think it's important to find people who you trust, have conversations with them, but you really have to know yourself and know when to take someone's advice and know when to ignore it. Because each person is in a very unique situation with specific details that someone else might not be able to relate to. And so you really are the best person for deciding what's best for you in your career and what's not best for you in your career based on your specific situation. Yeah, you need to have a filter because it could be overwhelming, right? Like you're hearing, do this. No, don't do that. Listen to this. Don't listen to that. Yeah. Right. Exactly. What about movies or Netflix series or fiction books do you think accurately depict your profession? I've got one in my head and I'm curious if you're going (laughs) to say that. Yeah. So everyone in baseball these days knows about Moneyball, I believe. Moneyball was a book by Michael Lewis, and then it was turned into a movie. I think everyone in baseball has read the book. The movie, I actually think is also, I think it's a great movie. It was nominated for Best Picture. That's definitely worth reading and watching. For international scouting, which is specifically what I do, there's actually a really good documentary called Hello Tarot. Pelotero is the Spanish word for a ball player that gives you a really good in-depth look at what international scouting is like. So scouting players in the Dominican Republic and Venezuela when they're 13, 14 years old. The industry has changed since that movie came out, but I remember watching that maybe five years ago and thinking that it was relevant to what I was doing. Mm, Good. Okay. We'll include that in show notes so that Java junkies will be able to look it up easily and Mm -hmm. and hopefully watch it. And now final espresso shot. What would Java junkies be surprised to learn about your profession, Eve? (laughs) I'd say that my job is not just watching baseball all day. My job is not just fun and games. It's a job. This is work. It's an extremely competitive environment to get into the industry. And then once you're in the industry, you're competing with 29 other teams day in and day out. So I don't come into the office and just have fun and get to hang out with people and watch baseball. It's a job and there's a lot of pressure and a lot of responsibility. Okay, Eve, we're going to be getting more into those responsibilities in our longer interviews. So Java Junkies are going to definitely want to tune into that. But for now, thank you so much for making time for coffee with me and the Java Junkie community. I really enjoyed talking with you, Eve. Yeah, great. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for listening to Time for Coffee, where the professionals in the jobs that most interest you always have time to grab coffee. 24-7, no matter where you live. I have one quick favor to ask you. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Time for Coffee. Thanks so much.